Hey everybody, thank you so much for uh, clicking the link to watch this video. I'm going to talk today about the thyroid. I do a lot of workshops, probably between two and four every month for the last three years, and one of the most popular topics uh, people are interested in hearing about is the thyroid. Um, most people, uh, their thyroid shows normal on lab, but in my experience their thyroid is not functioning properly. Now. Uh, most people get their labs run and know something's wrong because of symptoms and uh, the lab ranges seem to be pretty broad and it just uh, at best I see people being uh, managed with pharmacology uh, usually it's from a hypothyroidism that means uh, not functioning fast enough or up to optimum levels and we see things like uh, uh, thyroid drugs use Synthroid and things like that, or there is a natural version called Armour Thyroid I see often. Uh, but I get a lot of patients that come in and they're on those things and they're still not feeling well. Their thyroid is still giving them symptoms. So I'm not diagnosing thyroid diseases, uh, no diagnoses here. This is just what I call thyroid stress. And thyroid stress can have lots of different causes. Um, so I'm just going to talk for a minute about the thyroid. So the thyroid is a very small organ, it's located right here kind of at the base of the throat, and uh, it looks like a butterfly or a barbell. And it's very small, very sensitive organ, and its job basically is to make thyroid hormones which regulate body temperature, metabolism, things like that. Those thyroid hormones will go on to, to affect over 90% of the tissues in your body, so it's really important that your thyroid is working properly. So people come in and say, hey, I have thyroid symptoms, and here are the common things I see. Cold hands and cold feet. Uh, if you look at your fingernails, if you have vertical ridges on your fingernails, that's going to be a, a kind of a flag for it. Um, evenly distributed weight gain. Kind of you gain weight in the earlobes and calves, and you lose weight in the earlobes and calves, and your whole body kind of looks the same, but it gets larger and smaller based on, um, on, on what you're doing with your thyroid. Uh, another thing, we get the brain fog. And for those of you out there who don't know what brain fog is, that is when you're uh, uh, dialing a phone number and then you put it to your ear and it starts to ring and then you have a moment of terror because you forgot who you're calling. Thank goodness my iPhone uh, tells me the name of the person or I'd be in a lot more trouble than I get in already. Uh, you're looking for your glasses and they're always up here. Uh, looking for your keys, they're in your hand. Um, I'm famous for going to the refrigerator and opening the door and just standing there with kind of a blank stare on my face. Um, I assume I'm hungry and I'm looking for something, but who knows what the heck I'm looking for. Now my thyroid stress is induced by a newborn baby, and uh, for those of you who know about newborn babies, um, they like to sleep, but typically more in the day than at night. So I get the 2 to 4 a.m. shift these days, which makes me a little foggy, causes a little adrenal stress, a little fight or flight, and that adrenal stress, too much, they're called glucocorticoids, they're, they're steroids that are made in the adrenal glands, when they're flooding your system because your body perceives some sort of stress or danger, that will actually, or can, inhibit your thyroid function. Inhibited thyroid function or slow thyroid function can also be known as hypothyroidism. Hypo just means slow, under functioning. Uh, another thing that can happen with the thyroid, um, like I said, it gets blamed for a lot. It can be under-functioning, but actually be very healthy, and this is mostly what I see. So adrenal stress, fight or flight stress, can slow the thyroid down through inhibition. Uh, the thing that turns the thyroid on is the pituitary gland. So glands in the brain signal the thyroid to release its thyroid hormones, which one of them is TSH. That's a stimulating kind of hormone for the thyroid. Um, and the pituitary uh, is a little tiny gland in the brain, and it's very sensitive to exercise. So exercise will get your thyroid going. The problem is most people, exercise will stress their adrenal system out. So you're turning it on, turning it off, and then you're stuck in that loop. That's why improper exercise can be dangerous to your metabolism. Uh, second thing I see often with thyroid, thyroid hormones, once they're activated, have to go to your liver for activation. 60 to 80 percent of your thyroid hormones have to be activated by your liver and your gut. So if you don't have great digestion and great liver function, then your thyroid hormones won't activate. Uh, we'll talk about the liver more in an upcoming episode. There's a lot of fat burning, uh, immune system, and detoxification that happens in the liver. 
And uh, so that's a couple, two, three ways that the thyroid can be affected. Too much stress, unhealthy liver, or not the right kind of exercise. And so ways of helping that, obviously you have to know uh, what's going on first from a nutritional perspective, uh, an electromagnetic perspective. Uh, it's like cell phones and internet and all those things. Are they affecting your body or not? Um, sensitivities and allergies, uh, toxins in the environment, um, emotional triggers. There's all these things that can affect the organs of our body and the systems of our body. So I just wanted to, to give you guys some idea that the thyroid can be normal on labs and very stressed and underfunctioning, and the thyroid can show abnormal or, or maybe even diseased according to labs and findings, but it may not be the fault of the thyroid. The thyroid may be being affected by those other organs we talked about. So it's very complex. You're always welcome to ask me questions. Um, if you respond to this email, I will personally get those, uh, those questions, and I'd love to chat with you. If you have any of those, whether you see me all the time in my office or have in the past, or you're yet to see me, um, doesn't matter. I will open your email and respond the best I can. And if I don't feel like I could respond uh, adequately through an email, then you know maybe we could talk about chatting uh, or consulting about that. So that's all I wanted to tell you about thyroid stress today. And I hope that shed a little light on kind of how that thyroid works and why so many people are being diagnosed with hypothyroidism um, when really uh, there's a lot of mismanagement going on. So have a great day and uh, feel free to respond to this email or call the office if you have any questions. Bye-bye.